Welcome back, Unity people, to the platform gaming tutorial with your host, James. That is me, my awesome sexiness. Now, today's lesson is going to be parallax in the camera. This is a request from one of the viewers of previous videos in this series. He said there's a lot of uh, argument going on in the Unity forums and other places about parallax cameras. So I decided to do some research because I've never built a system for parallax cameras. Um, I've seen quite a few games that have it. It is a pretty cool effect. Um, it's kind of difficult to get right, at least in the viewer's eyes. But I'm going to show you the basics on how to set up a simple system. And we're going to do this with a couple of planes, real, real uh, flat objects, and maybe 15 to 20 lines of code, right? So we're going to get a great effect with little scripting. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We're in scene two, um, the tutorial scene two of scene one. Scene one has a drop back background. <clears throat> so uh, we're not going to play with the effects of that. That's a static background. Okay, what we want to do is change the effects of um, a moving background. Now we could do it in here add in a couple of planes in the background and have them move around and stuff, but we're just going to go ahead and do it in tutorial scene 2 because it currently doesn't have a background, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change the main camera because right now it's seeing this nasty blue background. I'm going to go ahead and just change that to a black. And that's going to help to highlight that the textures that I've made for my background. So let's say this is night, maybe it's a construction zone. So I've prepared a couple of textures. Uh, a background one with kind of a warehouse cityscape sort of look right here and I've made it seamless so that is that the left edge and the right edge match up perfectly at the same height okay and that means that I can make it tiled in the background and the same for background two here is just a, a lot taller just a little bit taller and again a solid seam all the way across Okay, so when this part comes to an end, it will start over right here, and they will match up. And so it will appear seamless to our, our, uh, our players. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just select both of those and drag them into the textures folder. It's important to note that both of these textures are 1024 by 1024. Okay, so in our textures, we can go to our BG1 or background one. It is a texture. We want it to repeat. We are not going to change this to clamp because we want it to repeat. We are going to change the filter mode to point. The max size is 1024 by default, so we can leave that there and put it at 16 bits. So that is, uh, that's the compression ratio we want for the format. And then we can set the same exact settings on background two. Okay. So we do want to repeat. We want to make it point and 16 bit. Okay. Apply. So we've got our backgrounds all set up. We need to make materials for these. So I'm going to go to the materials folder. I'm going to right click and create a material and change this materials name to BG1 and press enter. And now I'm going to select my texture BG1 right here. So it comes in and we've got the black in the background. Now you won't see that here, but because this is our first background, it will cover up the second. So we need to also on this one set the transparent I don't know why my Unity does this. It puts the, the menu way over here on the left. I don't know if that's a bug or what, but if I click it a second time, it comes back. Let's just set it over here. Transparent Diffuse. That's the shader we want. And you can see the, uh, the black part disappears. Okay. So rather than right click and create new material and all that other blah, 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 I'm just going to right click on this, or I'm sorry, click it so that it's blue and highlighted, and then press Control D it will automatically add one to the uh, the one at the end and make this a BG2, which makes sense because the name of our texture is BG2. So we're going to select the texture, BG2, and it's already set up for transparent diffuse. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these backgrounds to the scene. We're going to go to game object, create other, plane, rotate this plane 90 degrees on the X, 180 on the Y, so it's facing forward towards the camera in the proper rotation. Okay. So then what we're going to do is scale this up. Okay. I'm going to scale it on the X. So it's really big. And you want to make it um, quite a bit bigger than your game level. Um, just because it's going to be moving. Okay. I'm going to show you how that all that's done in a bit. 
and then we want to scale it up and then we're going to go ahead and move it with the move tool we're just going to move it down and this is going to be our background one so we can take our BG1 material and just drag it on here now you'll notice that the bricks are stretched the background is way stretched it's super long so we're going to go to this X tiling and change that up to 10 actually that looks a little scrunched let me move the plane up a bit so that's our background that looks a bit scrunched so let's go ahead and change it down to 5 5 looks pretty clean I like how 5 looks okay so we can take this plane and I'm gonna rename this plane to BG1 and as you can guess we're gonna select it and control D to duplicate it and we this time it does not rename it so we need to do that so we go into BG1 over here and we say BG2 I guess I missed it. Let's go BG2. Press enter. Okay. So background 2 right now is sitting exactly in the same place as background 1. So we need to move it back on the Z. So we're going to move it back. And I'm going to set the Z on this to um, 10. Okay. Actually, I'm going to set it to 20. Okay. And for BG1, I'm going to set it at 10. Okay, now we need to change the material on BG2, so we can select it, the plane, on the background 2, and give it the BG2 material, BG2, and this one also needs to be tiled, and since they're the same size, we know that the tiling is just going to be 5. Okay. Now, I've gone ahead and looked up parallax, and the way it works in Wikipedia, I know, the most reliable source on the internet, not really. But parallax is described <clears throat> in here as the viewpoint moves side to side, the objects in the distance appear to move objects in the distance, ergo further away, appear to move slower than the objects close to the camera. So this would indicate to me that distance plays a role. And that's why we set specific distances here in Unity, 20 and 10. Those will come into play because we know for a fact that our camera sits at negative 10. Actually, I'm not really sure if it's going to make a difference, but uh, I'd like to pretend that there's some science in here and that it does. <laughs> so just bear with me. Okay, um, so our main camera is sitting right now at a Z position or an X position of zero. So let's go ahead and do the same for our backgrounds and set the X at zero and the BG2 at also zero. Now we may need to scale these up and change the tiling, but we'll go through that when we get to it. Now is for the really fun part, at least the part I think is fun, which is the scripting, okay? So we're going to go to scripts, we're going to right click, and we're going to create a JavaScript, and we're going to name it Parallax, oh uh, yeah, we just call it Parallax, because that's what it does, okay? So we're going to open, pop this open in Mono Develop. okay, let me s scroll up so you guys can read this, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is start out by declaring some variables. The first one is going to be private because the users will never see it. So we say private var capital X and this will be a float or a decimal number basically. The next one will be a variable named uh, offset and it will be an integer or a non-decimal number basically. And the last one is a variable called follow camera and this is going to be a boolean okay like I've explained in the past booleans are like light switches they only have two states on or off or in this case true or false okay so you're wondering what the X is for I'm sure you've already figured out that the offset is for how much we want to move the background and the camera is whether or not the background should follow the camera or not pretty descriptive but what's the X for well, in order to determine the camera's position, where it is at right now in the game, we need to know where it originally started. So in the start function, we're going to say X, capital X, is equal to camera.main.transform.position.x. So this will save the camera's starting position, which we know to be zero, at its start. But if our player doesn't start at zero, let's say our player spawns on the right hand side of the screen and he's moving to the left, then the X position will not be zero, it will be something else. So rather than just putting zero in, we make the system dynamic by asking for the position first. Okay? 
That's what this does. All this basically does is store the camera's starting position.